After evading it for two and a half years, COVID finally got me and it sucked. Hey, this video is brought to you today by my friends at Element. Element is a tasty electrolyte mix with everything you need and nothing you don't. That means lots of salt and no sugar. Element was formulated to help anyone with their electrolyte needs and is perfectly suited to folks following keto, low carb, or paleo diets. Element contains a science-backed electrolyte ratio of 1,000 milligrams of sodium, 200 milligrams of potassium, and 60 milligrams of magnesium per packet. The perfect ratio I have found for me. What I love the most is that there's no junk, no sugar, no coloring, no artificial ingredients, no gluten, no fillers, no BS. As a member of our community, Element has a very special offer for you. You can claim your free Element sample pack simply by going over to the website, drinkelement.com forward slash Marcus Philly to get yours. And if you're wondering what my favorite flavor is, raspberry salt mixed with some ice water is delicious. I hope you enjoy. Sometimes you can have all the healthy habits in the world and everything still goes sideways. This is a theme I've heard from many of you in my DMs after I shared my ways to get better sleep. I work nights, I've got young kids, my life is crazy right now. Telling those of you whose stress is high, sleep is bad, and rhythm is off to take a rest day might be fine for 24 hours. But what do you do when these periods last days, weeks, or even months? How do you get a satisfying workout and use movement to feel better, stay moving towards your goals, and keep nutrition at least somewhat decent? Let's dig into the warning signs that it's time to change course and what to do in the gym and the kitchen to get back on the right track realistically. Here's what happened when I got super sick. I knew it wasn't the run of the mill cold when I lost all motivation to move. I slept terribly and wanted to crawl back to bed as soon as I was up. And my appetite was all out of whack. Physical, mental, and emotional stress were high and sleep and energy were very, very low. In my case, it was clear as day that the usual workout routine was not on the table. But what if you're not sure if you should push through or change course? Here are the warning signs that a slowdown may be in order. Brain tired. Are you feeling slow today? Do you want to reach for an extra cup of coffee? Is your short-term memory a little bit off? These are all signs that your nervous system is under-recovered. When our brain is fatigued, our nervous system signaling starts to slow down and it limits how effectively we can send signals to our muscles leading to feeling slow. For the first four days of being sick, I shut things down almost completely. I didn't seem to have much choice. My body was just not interested in doing my normal physical activity. Starting on the fifth day, I started to feel a little bit better and got little hits of energy. Rather than jumping right back into movement, I decided to ride out my unplanned rest from exercise and stay out of the gym for a few more days. Instead, I started incorporating longer walks each day and made sure to hit my 10,000 step goal. So here's what to eat when you're out of whack. Throughout this whole initial period of being sick, I made sure to keep 80% of my diet routine. I kept protein the priority at every meal and stuck to my normal fruit, meat, and dairy diet. I gave myself 20% wiggle room to have some foods that felt a little more comforting during the sickness. I ate popcorn every day, and we had a few additional family movie nights that week. When you can't move as much as you'd like, nutrition is a key area to keep your energy and body composition going in the right direction and help you heal faster as well. Be realistic, it's not the time to stay super strict either. I recommend that you nourish instead of dieting. Now is the time to let go of your quantity control and focus on foods with high quality instead. When we eat foods that are of the highest quality, our bodies tend to know just about how much we need to eat. When we are overstressed, this is a good fallback place. High quality foods are high in protein, unprocessed, more fruits, veggies, and whole ingredients, and foods that are found generally in nature. So how do you get back to movement and find motivation? By day eight, I rounded the corner with my illness. The aches and fevers were gone, and I had some congestion that was still there, 
but I was clearly in a better place. The struggle at this point was that I really didn't feel like training. I'd gotten used to having back that hour of the day when I normally trained. And because I was behind on a lot of work and life from eight days of being out, it seemed much easier to skip the training and just get more done. But I also had to contend with my body starting to hurt from inactivity. My low back and hips were sore and achy in place that I never generally feel. I hadn't been doing any purposeful functional movement for a week and instead had been sitting for more hours of the day than typical. My body was pissed and I knew in the back of my head that I needed to start moving again to feel better. Furthermore, I also knew that the lack of training and exercise was making me less energetic overall. I knew I had another gear inside of me that I wasn't able to tap into because I had been so sedentary. Years of discipline and training consistency have taught me that there is a huge reward awaiting me if I can get over the hump and just start things up again. How could I get moving when my body had just been through a ton of stress and my sleep was still not optimal? How would I bridge this gap? You'll hear me talk a lot about progressions in functional bodybuilding to keep getting stronger and fitter week over week. That's all fine when you're in good health and managing your stress and sleep adequately. If you're not, remember that movement is powerful medicine if you use it wisely. What you don't want here is a setback that leaves you worse off because you pushed too hard too fast. If we focus on moving our bodies without any pressure to progress or to go hard or challenge our intensity, then we have a recipe for healing and getting back into good rhythms sooner rather than later. So forget where you are in your training cycle or program for the moment and make it the goal in the gym to just move well. Here's my recipe for how to take the pressure off your workouts and get moving again. Apply these principles for a few days in a row and let the internal drive and motivation build naturally. Soon enough, you'll be looking to push yourself and progress again. Step one just commit to quality warmups. All you're gonna to commit to is completing a 10 to 15 minute warmup, not all out, just to work up a little breathing and sweating without getting too uncomfortable. If all you do today is complete a warmup for 15 minutes, you are on your way to feeling better soon. What is much more likely is that after finishing your warmup, you'll feel some more internal drive to do the rest of training. Step two, quality focus versus intensity. Come to your training with the goal of completing the work listed with quality rather than intensity. Nothing has to feel hard today. Lighten weights, go slower, take slightly longer rests, but just make sure you get the work done. If we focus on quality and ditch intensity, then the pressure we might feel to perform drops dramatically. Step three, consider skipping the elevated heart rate work, AKA the conditioning. Conditioning work with high or elevated heart rates is always tough for people, but especially tough if your body and brain are a bit stressed already. So consider skipping those sections of training. Leave them for another day and just focus on the slower paced strength training. Step four, leave some in the tank. This goes hand in hand with step two, but something I always like to think about is leaving some effort in the tank by the end of training. I want you to leave the gym feeling like you could have pushed harder, but you purposely did not. This will lead to a greater likelihood of showing up the next day and will leave plenty of energy in reserve to continue healing and managing the stress imbalance you are coming out of. Finally, in today's environment of more, faster, harder, all the time, it's worth noting that giving yourself permission to change course when needed might take some intentional reframing. While short-term goals and progress are very motivating, your fitness journey is lifelong and will inevitably have dips and peaks. You may never have learned how to use movement and nutrition to nourish instead of punish or push. So experiment with being in the now versus working toward the future. Take a few days to focus less on production and working for a cause. We can be such a focused society on making things, producing things, and getting work done. This can raise internal stress and block us from assessing the healing power of being present in the moment. This might look like taking a day to forget about deadlines or the project you keep wanting to move forward. It could look like taking five minutes to close the laptop in the middle of the day and just sit and breathe. Find moments or entire days to say no to being an overachiever. Instead, find a day to be lazy, also known as staying in the present. 
Keep all this in mind during those periods where your sleep, nutrition, training, illness, and some other stressors is all out of whack. Use today's tips to help get you back on track quicker with fewer setbacks. And make sure to hop onto our email list at functional-bodybuilding.com for more resources just like this one.